Hi everybody, my name is Rhys Barber. I'm the audiologist here at Audiology Associates. Thanks very much for watching episode 800 with us. Uh, we want to do something a little bit different to mark episode 800. Um, so we asked you guys for some suggestions and one of the suggestions that came up that we thought would be a really good idea is you asked us to tell you about our favorite videos and to meet some of the team. So we thought we'd combine those two things together. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get every single member of our team here to come on say a quick hello to you guys uh, and tell you about their favorite video and why they chose it. So um, thank you so much for sticking with the channel all this time and for watching the 799 videos that went before this one. Uh, but I'm not gonna waffle on too long, guys. We'll get into it. So my personal favorite video and the one that always sticks in my mind uh, is episode 67. It's the 11 centimeter long skin ribbon. It is one of my all time favorite ones because I remember the patient and the procedure so vividly. Uh, I remember just being so shocked. It was the first time we'd ever come across any kind of skin ribbon before and it was 11 centimeters long, so it was amazing. So without further ado, I'll let you carry on and watch that video. Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching our video today. This patient attended due to reduced hearing and as we can see when we look in here, we can see lots of uh, skin debris, um, lots of little tiny bits of wax in there as well. So we're gonna go in with a standard size Zolna tube, just gonna grip on this skin. Um, just getting the first grip, there we are, it's just starting to untangle. You've seen a few of these videos before, we're just starting to get this long strips of um, dead skin coming away that's been hanging around in the ear canal, so I'm just trying to wiggle it just to keep it feeding out of the canal. You know, just broken off the end there, so we're just going to use the crocodile forceps just to get a grip on this skin. There we are. So we're still working on the outer part of the ear canal at the moment because we've got this uh, this long strip to get hold of. Yeah, you can see you're just feeding this continuous bit of skin. There we go. Let's just get to the, the end there. So let's get rid of that. And we can see the the, uh, the next section there has been brought forward. So you can see where it's just blocking all around the outside edge of the ear canal. So we're trying to get a good grip on this with a suction tube. There we go. Now we've got the next piece of uh, this ribbon-like skin. Just trying to keep as much of that so we get a nice, nice firm grip with the suction tube. Slowly, gently pulling this out of the canal. There you go, and just see it feeding back out. We're going a fair, fair distance away from the canal now, so I'm going to have to switch and just see if we can get a grip on this with the crocodile forceps now. The difficulty with crocodile forceps is sometimes it can actually shear the little bit of skin that you're holding. It won't actually, uh, it's more likely to break. So we're just gently pulling this, still feeding out. There we go. Just remember this is just pure skin, it's just old skin debris. There you, are. you can see it's quite a long strip of skin. There we go. It's got a little bit more to come away. So this is the this is the tail end of it. We can just see a little blue that you can see just down the uh, ear canal. There's the uh, the eardrum itself. There we go. Just taking the debris. You can see there's a little piece of wax just stuck to the eardrum there. It's going to go in very gently. Take that one little piece of wax away. Being very delicate. This is quite a sensitive part of the ear. There we go, and that's disappeared. And there we are, nice shiny eardrum, all looks nice and healthy. Uh, patient hearing much better. This is the, the two pieces of skin that we removed. The first section you can see here up to about seven centimeters is the, the second piece we took out. And the remainder is the first piece, little bits of wax in the bottom of the tank there. There we are, well, as always guys, if you like the video, then please like, share, subscribe, and... Uh... Hi, my name's Tisha. I'm one of the admin clerks at Audiology Associates. My favourite uh, video is 741. It's a foreign body behind the ear plug. When the ear plug is removed, you can see the foreign body in the ear and it is beautifully removed then by the microsuction. Hope you enjoyed this video too. Thank you very much and enjoy watching. My name is Reese Barber. I'm one of the audiologists here at Audiology Associates. And my name is Taylor Green and I am the other audiologist here. Um, this is actually my patient to start with. So there's two patients in this particular compilation. 
uh, came in to see me a couple of days ago, actually. This is quite a recent one that I've done. This, you can see, we've got n not completely narrow, but we've got quite narrow ear canals here, which are, are holding these deep plugs of wax in place. Now, we've got the standard size Zollner tube in here. I'm starting at the bottom of the ear canal, trying to lift and peel. Now you can see just under the plug, you can see almost like those, those ripples of, of, of skin underneath. And this is where that plug has been sat for quite a while. So we're just, well, you can see me <laughs> trying different sections of this plug here, because we've started lifting it from the bottom. We're now trying to detach this from the top of the ear canal. So what we're hoping is as we, you can see these little bits drawing into the suction tube, I'm hoping to get to a harder part of this core. So is that skin sort of folded around? Is it kind of holding that plug in I, there? I, I, would have, I would have thought that would be the case because just looking at how the, the skin was underneath this plug. Yeah. So we've just, you can see that um, this is broke away from that plug. You can see that deeper section was still in place. So we've got a quite a decent sized piece away there. Now this particular patient does use oil um, regularly, but in, in this case, it hasn't really affected it a great deal because you've got this, um, uh, well, as I said, the center of this wax is still quite hard. So this is where you can see us wiggling this now and we're trying to squeeze it through this little gap. It's now, difficult when it pinches like that. At the bottom, yeah, it's not yeah, easy to it's, get through then. It's, it's not, soft and it's not hard. It's a very, very tricky consistency. I could have gone in with the Jobson horn here, but I think what would have happened, as you've seen on some previous videos, we may have just created a, a trench going straight through the middle of this wax um, and we would have spread the rest of this yeah. wax on the side of the ear canals, which would have basically made our job a bit more difficult. Ooh, that's, we that, st that's starting to <laughs> go, isn't it? Just yeah. yeah, there we go, here we go. And that's why I, and that's why I stuck with the suction here in this case, because I could see as we were wiggling, every little wiggle we were, we were doing, you could see it just inching away. And we've obviously got it, got it stuck at this the entrance This is a long here. piece, isn't it? It's it quite, looks like it's quite not. Quite a long piece. We're going to bend one way than the other. Oh, there we go. That is a that. good that's one. A, Look at that. That is a, a nice one. That's a meaty chunk. Yeah. <laughs> if you do like earwax removals, guys, and you, oh, it's a lovely looking earwax as well, sorry. Um, if you do like these earwax removals, guys, and you like watching these plugs coming out and the satisfying nature of these videos, <laughs> uh, you can always subscribe to the channel. You can follow the channel. You can heart. You can like. Um, I don't think there's any other thing they can do, is there? Share if you want to. Oh, share it around, yeah. If yeah. you dare. There you go. So. <laughs> share if you dare. <laughs> New tagline for the next video. So it, but um, yeah, so you can do that for us. That would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Make sure you stay tuned for the second video in this one, guys. We need your help with the second video. I'm not going to spoil it. I'll let Taylor carry on. But... <laughs> so same patient, other ear. Uh, coming away a lot easier this time. You can see we've started to already... Uh, peel away and break apart this this chunk. You could see that uh, that, that that kind of strip of, of like hard dead skin. So that's what you could see on the first video, wasn't it? Yeah. All those ripples. That was effectively that skin that was started to come in, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So similar similar process here now. Standard size suction tube. Trying to wiggle an inch this through. There we are. I'm trying to. <laughs> you can, there we are. You can see I'm, I'm lifting and here you can see it starting to move. I'm going to pull this down now, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we're going to pull that down, try and roll that through. There you go. Ooh. Oh, I was so close. Oh, I was they, going to go they, there. They get so frustrated in these ones because we're literally at the entrance of the ear now. We're, we're right at the pinner, which is the, the outer part here. There we go. That's, a, that's almost like a that's, ball, that's isn't like it? A, like a pellet, yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's just obviously broke away from this deeper section. So again, same process, little grip, trying to get a decent grip here. That was a bit of a twiggle then, I thought. It was a bit of a twiggle, and, and you could see that longer section that was just hiding around the corner there. Yeah. So that, and there we are, another, another long piece that we've removed. That should be it. Oh, oh there's obviously problem. a little bit that we're just tidying up just to yeah, get just... that last little bit in the corner. Should suction straight off. Yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah we excellent. Are. And again, textbook eardrum, nice eardrum and healthy. Eardrum. Maybe, maybe possibly a slight retraction there, um, looking at the, the, the malleus. Uh, protruding into the to the eardrum. Are you doing inches this time? I'll do an inch, yeah. Like okay. this. we got uh, just over an inch and a half on, on that one. Yeah, so it's a little, little, little four and a half centimeters that one. 
You've got your glasses on. Either. I've got my <laughs> I can see. Uh, guys, we need your help with this one. There's a bit of a foreign body in here, and we could not identify what this thing was. We, we've, we've got a guess at what we think it might be, but what I thought it was, the patient had never, ever used. So, um, first of all, we've got this uh, skin, debris, bit of wax, standard wax removal, this one, lovely and soft, coming away really, really well. Mm. Um, but it's what goes on behind this wax is, is, the, is the key to this one, really. Um, let's get rid of all this bits of, as you can see, bits of skin. Oh, yeah, all unfolding. Yeah, it's always nice when you see it all. Look at this, still coming still out. Coming you think, out, yeah. oh, this is brilliant. It's all coming oh, away really well. Away. Thought lovely, got a lovely little skin ribbon here. Uh, this is going to be a great one for YouTube. <laughs> it's coming away really nicely. You can uh, see it pulling that next layer forwards. It's doing well here. That was a nice chunky plug there. It was well, quite actually. a bit in there actually, but it's the bit just behind us and it was actually resting against the eardrum. Now you barely see it here, but take a look at this as we lift this forwards. Here. What on earth is that? It's clear, it's hollow, it's got a, it's almost like a pipe, it's a little tube. Um, it's tapered on the one end, completely clear. It felt, it didn't feel rubbery, it felt quite solid. Um, now I thought this was, on some hearing aids you get a pipe, a tube that goes through it, and I thought this was part of the tube, but the patient has never ever used that type of hearing aid. So it's not that. I just realised my, I, I was really trying to think of what it could be as well. My face was probably a bit of a picture then, sorry. <laughs> but I could not, you can see it's only small, it's mm. only about a couple of mil long. But it's flat on one side, tapered down. It feels almost, it doesn't feel like glass, but it feels like almost like a, like a hard plastic with a, a, hot, a channel running through the middle of it. So we've got no idea what this could be. And patient didn't have the foggiest either. Whether or not something is... Broken away and you know, in. Fling, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I do think maybe part of an earring or something like that, maybe. Yeah, Have a th let us know in the comments what you think it is, guys, because yeah. we're, we're a bit stumped as to what we think, and Oblivious. patient was as well. We couldn't work out what, what this was at all, mm. it was a bit of a strange one. Um, a mystery, a mystery, <laughs> mystery object, mystery for That's object. the title for the video there, it's <laughs> a mystery <laughs> object. There you go. Um, so guys, thank you very much for watching our video today. If you do enjoy the videos, like I said, you can always subscribe, follow, like, heart, thumbs up, all the thumbs rest up, of it. do I think, do heart. <laughs> There you go. Um, Thumbnail. So, <laughs> so, so it's good to take care of yourselves. Take care of your ears. And take care of one another. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hello, I'm Claire. I'm one of the administration clerks here at Audiology Associates. My favourite video was episode 66. Um, it was the largest um, removal of earwax. Um, the reason it was my favourite, it was the sheer amount of um, wax in such a small space and it was the skill and the preciseness that the audiologist needed to use in order to remove um, the wax. Um, I hope you enjoyed and thank you very much. Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching our video today. Uh, we have another bilateral ear wax removal for you. Now, this gentleman's attended clinic with some dry wax in both ear canals. So we're looking here, we just see a little sort of mound of dry wax in here. So we're going to use a bit of suction to remove this first of all. This is a standard size ulna tube. So you can see it's used a little bit of olive oil just to try and soften this up for us. So we're just getting the first section away. Here we go, you can see the different colour variations in that wax there, so quite old and new wax together. That's suctioning away, you can see we've hit some of the harder pieces of wax in here now. Just get a grip on any leading edge we can with the uh, with the suction. It's a bit of an awkward shape to suction because it's quite flat in some places, which is difficult to get. So you imagine to get a good suction grip on this, you need to be completely blocking the end of the suction tube to get to allow the pressure to build to grab a good grip on it. When it's quite flat with lots of leading edges like this one is, it's difficult to get a good grip on uh, on it on one piece. So just taking it away piece by piece. This gentleman does have uh, an ear, nose and throat history, but not with this particular ear. Um, I'll explain a bit more detail when we look at the other side now. So still taking away these, uh, these little pieces. You can see it's quite flat here. It's gonna be difficult to get a suction grip. So we're gonna use the crocodile forceps just to go in. We're just gonna try and get underneath 
and above. There we are, just going to try and get a good grip on it. Just pulling, oh, a little bit broke off there. So it's now in the outer part of the ear canal. So we're just going to try and get another grip on this. And a little piece broke off. See, difficulty with using um, crocodile forceps is little bits break off sometimes. So I'm just going to use, because it's on the outer part of the ear canal, we're just going to go in with a Jobson horn just to get behind, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, behind it and maneuver it forwards. There we are. It's out of the canal now. <laughs> didn't want to come out that gap, so we're just going to use the suction just to get a grip on it to take it out. So there we are. That's the. Uh, you can see how flat that piece is. Looks like a little kind of penny shape. There we are. And there's the eardrum there. You can see. So we've cleared that wax away. A couple of little dots in here. So we're just going to go in with a slightly smaller suction tube just to hoover up. A little bit of dry skin there. That's gone. It's not as important to take away these little bits. It's um, it's not going to cause any issue having these little tiny pieces of wax in here. There we are, just taking away a couple of the extra little pieces. You can see a little hair just getting into the bottom of the view there. There we are, lovely shiny eardrum. Looking lovely and healthy. Okay, now. This here, there's a more complicated uh, history with this one. You can see we've got lots of dry wax in here, um, little bits of skin. Can't really see the eardrum in there. Um, what I thought was the eardrum in the top left-hand corner was just a, a reflective bit of skin. So this wax, uh, much, much tougher on this side. You can see we're just trying to lift it with the, the jobs and horn here. Much drier pieces of wax and dried up um pieces of skin so we're going to opt to use the crocodile forceps the difficulty with this wax is it's so dry that it's just you can see it's just starting to break away in little pieces um this is not going to be a quick extraction guys this is going to take quite a while um and you can see as soon as i'm going to grip on it it's just taking these little tiny bits away now, the reason I haven't gone in with the um, Jobson horn just yet is I can see that all of this is moving in one large piece. So as you get a grip on it, you'll see the whole thing is moving. Okay, but as hard as I'm pulling, on to, pulling at it with the, the crocodile forceps, the skin, the dry skin is holding this in place. So there, can you see the whole thing is moving? So if I try and put a Jobson horn in here, that's all I'm gonna do. I could try and drag it down the canal, um, but that's all it's gonna do is it's gonna be pulling against the dry skin from behind. So I'm gonna to have to push so hard against that wax to try and pull it out. I could risk damaging the ear canal itself or causing some irritation or bleeding in here. So I'm opting to stick with the crocodile forceps and just as painstakingly as I can, take all these pieces away. So we've got a, we've got a, quite a large mound of, of dead dry skin behind all this, which is just what's holding all of this in. But there is so much in here. And it's going to be quite a frustrating watch because you're going to get lots of these little pieces breaking away. Yeah, just lifting with the crocodile forceps. <laughs> As I'm getting a grip on it, you can see as I'm trying to push into it to get a good grip with the crocodile forceps, you can see the whole thing slides backwards. So every time I try and get a grip on it, the whole thing is moving backwards. And as I'm pulling it, the whole thing is being held together. That's why we're just breaking these little small pieces away. And we're starting to run out of places to get grips on here with the crocodile forceps. There, we just see we've got a bit of a leading edge there. Now, uh, people ask me, you know, why, why are you going in, coming out, going in, coming out? You can see the end of the crocodile forceps. They're quite blunt. Um, and as we're taking it away, what we're getting is a grip on, on a piece of wax. And as it pulls away, we're just trying to wiggle it out. It's not coming. You can see that you get these bits of wax sandwiched in between um, the grips on the crocodile forceps. Well, 
because the end is so blunt, I need to to get a really good idea of where the end of these are so I can clamp by the side of this wax. If it's all gunked up inside with, with wax and skin, I'm not going to be able to tell where that grip is. So um, I'm just going to use the suction now just to try and get another leading edge to work on with the crocodile forceps. It's too dry to take out the suction and because the dead skin is holding this in with such such force, suction grip is not strong enough to pull it out. So what I'm doing now is just pulling a piece down from the canal wall so I can try and get a grip on it. Ah, that's so frustrating, it just keeps breaking away. Um, just to try and get a grip on it so we can keep taking it away. Um, thank you to everybody who wished us the best with the new clinic launch. That's officially opening to uh, patients next a week tomorrow. So that's uh, the 27th of Feb. So if my videos do become a little bit more sporadic um, over the next week or so, it's just because I'm working so hard and getting it up and running, I might not have time to voice uh, the videos over, but I will keep trying to put one up um, at least every other day for you guys. So just starting to get some larger pieces moving down the canal now. So we'll... you can see it's just really frustrating to try and get grips around this wax because you think it's going to come and it breaks another piece away. So we're still working on this. No matter how much of this we take away, every time we look in there, there just seems to be more there to take away again. This is certainly one of the more difficult ones. It's not where the wax is so much, but just how the wax is behaving. Um, because all that skin that's in there. Um, the, the history for this, there you are, nice, uh, nice larger piece coming away there. Um, the history for this gentleman, he had um, issues with the perforation to his eardrum when he was a, when he was a youngster. And um, he's been noticing reduced hearing for a little while, but not really done anything about it. Um, presumed it was due to the fact he'd had this perforation when he was younger. So not really uh, got along to the GP to have a look in here. So this is probably the first time anyone's looked in this ear for a good number of years. Um, and what we have in here is just this whole uh, debris, skin, wax build up. And it's, this is quite a few years worth we're taking out here. So just maneuvering this wax into a better position so I can get a grip, so I can get basically um, underneath and above a leading edge in here. See, it's still coming, no matter how much you look in there, there's just more and more coming down the canal. Yeah, I've managed to work a piece to the outer section of the uh, ear canal now. Just getting a grip. still breaking away um, so I'm not expecting to see a, a nice lovely looking eardrum um, after what we've taken out of here um, I think we're gonna obviously we're gonna see a lot of scarring there um, we might not even see the eardrum at all looking at how much of this dead skin that's coming out still maneuvering this out just keeps coming See, still no obvious gaps in here. Um, there is a bit of a leading edge. I think we can get behind it with the jobs and horns. I'm just going to gently probe this down. Now we're starting to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. There, now that looks like part of the eardrum I can see behind there. So you can see all this skin and wax debris coming out. There you go. I don't know whether you guys have watched there was a previous one we did where there was a long ribbon of skin in the ear canal that got removed. I think effectively that's what's happened here. Uh, but instead of getting to it early as we did with the other one, this ribbon of skin has stayed in here and hardened. And that's just caused all of this wax um, and debris to build up around it. So we're still removing here. You can see we're still taking wax from this canal. You can see how tough this is, really holding this wax in here. It doesn't want to come out without a fight. 
and still there's more in there so we're still going another large piece of skin and wax and we're still going you can see we're pulling all this old dead skin away now so just using a little bit of suction just to try and loosen some more of this dead skin away trying to maneuver into a better position back in with the crocodile forceps because we've got a leading edge we can work on is it going to come away in one big piece? No, it doesn't look like it, no. Nope. Okay, going back in with the drops and horns, we've maneuvered it forward slightly, so just going behind this wax and skin. You can see it, how much it's curled around in there. Okay, it's still coming. You can see it all just wrapped up in here and all twisted around itself. There you go. And it's still coming. So more suction. You can see we're getting to the, the newer kind of dead skin in here. It's whiter in color hasn't been in there as long so we know we're coming to the end of this now so we're just trying to work this down the canal you can see can you see it all pulling down in there I mean, this, is a, this is quite a few years worth just trying to break this section away there you go. Okay, and still there's more. Okay, now it looks like we're coming towards the end of it. There you go. Let's take a look in there. We still got more coming. Yeah, a little bit more on the outside edge of the ear canal there. So just gonna pull this. You can see how this is holding in. All these layers of skin wrapped and wrapped and wrapped around one another. Um, and all in, sort of intertwined with the wax. So you can see now why we were having real difficulty getting this out of the canal. There you go. Long strips of skin like embedded at the rear of this. Okay, right, so we've removed all the debris. You can see just how messy this ear canal is. Um, what you have here, obviously this skin hasn't been exposed um, to any ear or anything for quite some time. There's a lot of old dead skin and debris in here. Just sort of lifting a couple of these little pieces away. Um, what you can see at the top of the screen, this little flap we're going to work on now is just in front of the eardrum you can see can you see that the, the sort of texture of the skin that's the eardrum behind it there with lots of this sort of dry skin um debris sitting in front of it so this chap is going to have to take a trip to the ear nose and throat department we've cleared this out as best we can um but i think what's left there i think that's actually part of the actual drum itself i think this is hardened skin of the actual drum so um I'm not going to be able to take this away, just sort of gently touching it here, just trying to take some of this extra skin away. But you can see all the indentations and dimples around here. We've got a couple of people ask us why, you know, why we always show nice shiny eardrums. The majority of what we get coming through is, is quite healthy looking drums, but this is a very unhealthy looking ear canal. You can see there's still, um, still quite a bit of sort of scarring and bits and pieces going on in here. So yeah, trip down to, uh, trip down to your nose and throat for this one. Yeah, not a great deal we can do with that eardrum. Just want a really good shot of it so you could see what uh, what we look at here. But no obvious sort of anatomical features we'd associate with a healthy looking eardrum there. Now this is everything that came out. So the first, uh, probably about the first three centimeters, so the first say inch was uh, the, the one ear. The second ear was all the rest of that debris. 
so you can see we took out what 15 centimeters almost six inches and that's without what we had in the tank there so you can see there's quite a bit in there well thanks again. hi i'm stacy i'm the administration clerk here at audiology associates my favorite video or one of my favorite videos i should say is episode 590 with the mastoid cavity earwax removal it gives me a better understanding of when our patients are on the phone to us who has have these issues where they have to have regular wax removal treatments done as opposed to our everyday normal wax removals. Thank you! Bye! <laughs> Everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thanks very much for watching that earwax removal video today. Uh, just one patient, but very different ear canals. So this particular patient, uh, you can see there's a lot of dry skin here at the entrance. So I'm just starting off by using a little bit of microsuction. Just see how loose this is, whether we can get a good grip, whether it's gonna come away easily. Uh, but you can see it's pretty tough old stuff. Now, the reason we've got this collection of dry skin here at the entrance to the ear canal is because this particular patient has had an operation called a mastoidectomy. Now, your mastoid bone sits behind your ear. It's this bone here. Now, it forms the sort of outer section, if you like, of the ear canal wall. Um, so what, what can happen with some particular patients is they get repeated ear infections, and that infection can actually pass into the mastoid bone. Now, the reason they can do this is because your mastoid bone is full of little ear pockets. So they, they call it almost like a honeycomb, if you like. And the infection can actually get into those little spaces, and it can be really, really painful and very, very difficult to treat. Now, the only uh, option available to, uh, to clinicians then, unfortunately, is to remove the mastoid bone itself. So they will actually uh, cut away at this particular bone. So what you end up with, if you imagine that forms the outer wall of the ear canal, so instead of an ear canal looking like this, what happens is as it goes in, it opens right out like this. So in this case, it opens out to the left-hand side with a little shelf, which you'll see in a bit, and above the actual eardrum itself. So there's a lot in there that can, uh, can accumulate dead skin, and wax and things like that and because this patient's had repeated ear infections and they've also had the operation on the ear canal wall it also means that that skin migration process gets really interrupted in lots of different places so it means that that skin then starts to accumulate in the canal itself which is what we're taking away here so we'll have a good look around this mastoid cavity in a little second but it does mean you've got to collect all this dead skin and remove it now the crocodile forceps is moving really really effective here because the skin is dry and it's hard which means that it can grip really easily but it's not wet skin so it doesn't tear very well either so it means you can get big chunks like this away uh, much more easily than using the standard size zona tube. Now you'll see what I mean here about the ear canal. Now that's the shelf we're talking about there where the actual side of the canal was and you can see it, it tapers off into a little sort of flat spot. Now that's the actual uh, mastoid cavity there. You can also see the eardrum directly in front of you there, but just above that is where we would normally expect the top of the canal wall to be, but that's also been removed. So it means it's going up and across to the one side as well. So we're just removing a lot of the looser, tiny little bits of dry skin around the outside edge. There we go. We're just using the jobs and horn to do that because there's so many of them. We could go in and individually pick them up with a fine end, but it would take so long. So it's a lot easier sometimes just to go in with a jobs and horn and very gently tease across the canal wall, picking lots of these little bits up in one go. Now we can see this long strip here, just there we go, flicking further back in. So we just managed to clean that away. Uh, now you will see on here now, there's a little bit of dry skin there to the left-hand side. Now this is the dry skin that's migrating around that shelf. Now it's really important with a mastoid cavity that they have them cleaned out regularly. And the reason for that is because you can get lots of these bits of dry skin all sitting together in the ear canal, and then they're all wrapping around one another. It can cause a few issues as far as the actual canal itself is concerned. So we always go in and re check around that sort of all the nooks and crannies make sure there's nothing hiding down inside there uh, but it's coming away really really well here there we go so that bit's gone so it looks to me like the cavity is nice and clear but we will go in and have a good old check now and then we just got this little bit of dry skin so what I'm going to do here is just lift this slightly with the fine end and that's going to tell me where the dead skin stops and the fresher skin starts and then if we can lift it just to that point then we can go over the top of the Jobson horn and just take this off really effectively then so you can see me lifting so there we are now I'm meeting some resistance there so that's the fresher skin behind 
Now we've always got to be careful in ear canals uh, because we don't want to uh, cause any problems as far as bleeding is concerned. It does, it's inevitable in some cases, uh, but in this case we really want to be as careful as we possibly can here. There we are, just taking that little bit of dead skin away. I'll give you a bit of a tour of this now in a second. So we slow this down. So this is the shelf we're talking about. So this goes off to the left-hand side. So you can see the canal, that's where the canal wall should be, that little rump, uh, little uh, bump, sorry, right in the middle of the ear canal. And then we go all the way above the eardrum there. So it's removed above, and that is the eardrum itself. So when you'd look in a, an ear canal that hadn't had a mastoidectomy done, that's what you would see. And then the rest of that would be enclosed with the canal wall. But in this case, it's been removed upwards and across to the left as well. So we're just taking a look. We've got a last little bit of sort of dry skin here that we're just going to try and lift away. Now we're just teasing it off the canal wall there. Let's just lift. It's coming away quite well. Oh, it's almost come away. So I think we'll just go in now with the, uh, the crocodile forceps. Let's see if we can just grab the edge of that and start to take this away. There we go. There's another little bit as well. Just there, so we'll just grab that piece. There we go, lovely, brilliant. Now we'll have a good look, you can see the eardrum there. So this is what it looked like beforehand. And this is what it looks like now. So you can see a massive difference. Uh, now this is the patient's other ear, because they were really struggling with this one as well. Uh, but this is a very different story. There's no mastoidectomy being done here. So the ear canal is intact, uh, eardrum also intact. But we've just got a lot of wax in this one. It's quite a straightforward one. But we can see it's a very big plug of wax here. Now the patient had been experiencing quite a few hearing issues up until a couple of weeks ago. Now we always ask our patients when they book their appointments, just to put a little bit of olive oil in, just to start to soften this wax up a little bit. Uh, patient had done that and what has happened is it's actually managed to move the block slightly. So it was allowing a little bit of sound through. But what we're opting to do here is rather than going with the, the suction tube, because it was quite an angular front to that piece of wax, and the suction tube needs a nice flat surface ideally to get a good grip. So we've gone in, there was a little gap above with the Jobson horn here. You can see the color differences in the wax here. There's very light color here at the front very, very dark, uh, almost black wax here at the back. So very, very dark in color. So we're just taking this away. There we go. And let's have a look behind that. Now you can start to see this much softer type wax. Now the softer, more sticky type wax like this, it's not always great with the uh, Jobson horn. So I'm gonna switch back now. Let's just see how this moves if we get a bit of suction on it. Now sometimes we're lucky and there's just enough structure to the wax. You can see it's just starting to lift. That it'll peel the whole thing. I'm hoping it's gonna peel a whole big chunk off the canal wall and it's gonna make it very mobile and it starts to come out. Unfortunately, what happens is it's still pretty stuck further in. Uh, so it's not really budging that well. So let's just shift our position again. Got a little tiny bit of uh, dry skin just popping in front of the view. We're just gonna put square onto this section at the bottom give it a bit of a wiggle. Now I can see there's a bit of movement there. It started to lift and come forwards, but it's actually just detached that front looser section there. So it means that back section behind it didn't really move. So that looks still pretty solid to me. So let's see if I can unstick that section. There we are, so we're pulling that across. What I'm hoping is gonna happen is it's not gonna re-stick to the other side, but you can see it's very soft, it's just, moving the surface wax rather than moving the entire plug here. So let's get rid of that other looser section there. There we go. And let's see if that's, now we've got rid of those looser pieces. Let's see if we can get to this section at the back. Ideally what I want to do here is kind of bring this top section forwards. I think it's gonna roll and pick up uh, some more wax on the way down. So you know, when we, uh, make a snowman, you're gonna roll a tiny little ball that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the kind of thing we're talking about when you're trying to roll uh, this wax down. But I've put a bit of olive oil in here as well, uh, just to see if we can loosen this off the canal wall because I don't want it re-sticking if we move it. So this is gonna help with two things. It's gonna help us to get a better grip. It's also gonna allow this to slide a lot better. You can see it's already loosening off the canal. And as that peels away, it doesn't re-stick on the other side because the olive oil is forming that barrier there. So let's see if we can lift from the bottom. It's starting to move. You can see now, instead of just the surface moving, the whole plug is starting to move and it's breaking down. There we go. So we've just managed to get that front section away. Let's aim more. 
There we go, across to that side. Now let's see if we can pick the whole thing up and roll this down. There we are, you can see as we pulled it, the, the top section dropped forwards, but now we've got a good bit of movement here to the bottom section of the wax. So we're just gonna keep lifting, keep wiggling this forwards. It's almost out. There we go, out that comes. You can see a, a nice chunky bit of wax there, very dark in color, that wax. Uh, there's more behind it, so let's get that next section. Luckily, as we held on to the front section, excuse me, sorry, it started to pull that rear section forwards as well. You can see a little bit of olive oil on the camera there just as we're getting this out. There we go, out that comes. And we'll take a look behind that. How's that looking now? A little bit of dead skin here just at the entrance. Let's just nip that away. And we'll take a look at the eardrum behind there. There we go. Now we can see there's a little bit of, well, not a little bit, there's quite a bit of scar tissue on that eardrum. See that, that uh, milky colored uh, patches on the eardrum there. And you've got kind of two translucent patches in the middle there. Um, that's actually a bit of scar tissue. So there's this last tiny little bit that's just, we've got to be careful here because this is just above and leading onto the hammer bone. So can we detach this? I think we can detach a little bit, but there's not a tremendous amount we can get away there. There we go. I wouldn't want to do more than that because it's very sticky on the eardrum. So this is what it looked like beforehand. So we can see quite a solid patch and this is what it looks like afterwards. We can see the eardrum there. This is what we remove from both ears. So this is what, five centimeters, two inches worth of uh, skin debris and wax debris. You can see the skin debris, very, very different color, much, much lighter, uh, flatter, almost like little cornflakes, if you like, on, on there. And that's the skin debris. And then this much darker, uh, deeper kind of chestnut brown, almost ebony color wax that was sitting behind it. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video uh, and the explanation of uh, mastoids and mastoidectomies as well. Um, is if you did, don't forget to give us a like and uh, you can share it if you want to, guys. But as always, guys, take care of yourselves, take care of your ears and take care of one another and I'll see you all again real soon. Bye, everyone. Hello, everybody. I am Taylor Green and I'm one of the audiologists here at Audiology Associates. Um, the, I have chosen episode 709 for my uh, one of my favorite videos, which is uh, a super, super lengthy skin ribbon for you because I know a lot of you like, to, uh, like skin ribbons. Um, we also have Santa hats on and it was Christmas Eve. So there's a lot of things that were, were really good in that video. So check it out. This is, this is uh, my super lengthy skin ribbon. Hi everybody, my name is Rhys Barber. I'm one of the audiologists here at Audiology Associates. And my name is Taylor Green and welcome to Christmas Eve. Yay! Uh, day 24 of Waxvent and a massive happy birthday to, to I, Rhys. Yes, very old I am today, Tw guys. 21 today. 20, 21, 21 today. times. <laughs> to add a bit. <laughs> so um, if you've never seen a Waxman video before, guys, this is a special little treat we do for you over Christmas time, a little advent calendar full of wax videos. So you get a new one every single day, even Christmas day, which is tomorrow, we're nearly there. Hope you've been good, guys. Hope you've been yeah. good this year. Um, so this is your patient, isn't it, this one? Yeah, so we've got we've got two patients in this one, actually. So you've got, uh, got a doubler in this and one. And you've got to make sure yeah. you stay tuned for the second patient, because oh, it is really, really good. Very, very. Very yeah. worth watching that one. Yeah, stick around. Um, well. Yeah, so um, you've already kind of seen here while we were sort of just blabbering on <laughs> little bits. The, we started with the standard size on the tube. Uh, started with a suction here. Uh, it was a bit deceiving this wax. I thought it was going to be very very soft. Um, now you can see it's it's not. No. <laughs> we're actually using the Rosen inserter here, which is usually absolutely useless with soft wax. Yeah. Um, so what we're trying to do here is just dig the front of this Rosen inserter into the, the front of this. It's almost like skin and wax all mixed into, into one. So you've got the darker section on the sides. You've got this lighter material at the front, which is uh, more like dead skin. Now you will see it once we eventually get this plug out. There's a, a load of dead skin that's coming off the back end of this. Um, it's tough old stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so it, it's obviously fighting. Uh, yeah. Fighting coming out. It's, it it's looks a bit of a wrestle. A bit like a mixture of dry skin and wax in there, and it's all sort of dried together into this really, really hard plug. Yeah, so I'm trying to. So we, we're, we're sort of working around this sort of first bend here. Sometimes the wax can get stuck around that corner, so I'm trying to pull it across. 
to oh you can see the bottom and that go. kind of all lifting out of that uh, it that looks kind of looser corner. now doesn't it that's it you know you've got a good grip and it's coming when it gets that sort of it becomes really mobile in the entrance yeah. of the canal so we're just about to start rolling this forward oh just broke a little bit away so something's anchoring this in place then, isn't it? Because it's, as we're pulling it, it's, it's kind of, you sort of almost suck back into the canal a little bit then. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's something, something's holding it in place. And that's the, that's where the Rosen inserter comes in quite handy because with these drier uh, plugs, uh, it, it's not solid, but it's, it's kind of dry enough to hold together. And it's also dry enough for the Rosen inserter to, to stay in this wax yeah. as well. So that's what you can see me doing here, gently wiggling with the Rosen insert. I stack in here, and we're just gonna nip further back, roll this last bit. Now you can see that tail of dead skin there that's that's been holding this in place. A lovely little skin ribbon. We love a good skin ribbon here at Audiology Associates. Make sure you stay tuned for the second video in this <laughs> complexion case. Mm, there might be a slightly longer one on the second one. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> there might not be. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's coming away really well there. It's just dropped into the bowl of the year as well, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, the reason this bit's gotten quite dark, sorry guys, I've held the camera quite far away, but I'm just using suction to pull this out of that, uh, uh, out of the bowl there. It's just... We'll see it lifting up now. Yeah, there, you there go. we go. Not a massive piece, but was obviously enough to cause the patient some, some uh, not discomfort, but some hearing issues. Um, now you can see, um, I know a lot of people are going to sleep me for this, but there's little bits of like dead skin that I sort of left there. But um, the reason I've left this there is this particular patient um, uh, has some slight uh, hyperacusis, as we call it, so the sensitivity to sound. So yeah. I don't want to risk making that um, yeah, uncomfortable, uncomfortable for the patient. Or any, uh, yeah, or any, any worse. So, so just under three quarters of an inch on that one. Oh, sorry, I didn't even know. <laughs> centimeter and a half. Centimeter and a half, thank you. you <laughs> I didn't even know this was blabbering <laughs> on. Oh, here we go, guys. So this is this is actually a really really good one. Taylor, Taylor sent me a, 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 a screenshot of what you took out of this particular patient. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's uh, it's definitely definitely worth a look. This one. I'm actually going to stay quiet for most of this to watch this myself. So we are using the fine end here because we're very very deep into the ear canal, um, and I want to try and get a um, a strong enough grip on this skin because I know it's all dead skin. I know I can't, you can't really see any signs of wax there. So it oh, was peeling nicely there. Yes, Look at that peeling away from that canal wall. Starting to unfold. And that looks, ooh, that's quite long. Quite a long bit to start with. That's coming away really, a little bit of a, little, yep, yeah, there he is, a little so, bit of a ribbon. Yeah, so you can see that starting to peel away now. So we're starting to unravel all of the skin. No, it doesn't actually look like there's much in there. And I actually quite surprised myself with this one. Yeah. Uh, so this next section is a, a very tiny little plug that kind of comes away here. And when you get these skin issues, they do tend to sort of wrap around themselves, don't they, yeah. a little bit. And it looks like nothing until you start to pick it apart and unravel it. So we've got this center section there. Now this dry little sort of plug that was sat right in the center of that, uh, of that skin. No, this this is it. Keep watching this bit, guys. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be quiet, you know. <laughs> so we've got a, we've got a grip on a on a bit of skin there, um, and when you're pulling this kind of skin out, you sort of you get this type of length of skin ribbon, you get quite a bit, but it normally breaks off around here. No. <laughs> um, and when it keeps going, and you're pulling further and further away from the ear canal. This is a good one. Now, at this point, you've got to be really careful. If you pull too hard or too quickly, it's going to shear it. It's going to break off, yeah. <laughs> but it's coming away. Look at that. And we're still going. Still unraveling. So you're quite far away from the ear canal at this point, I'm aren't you? Pretty, yeah. I, I actually, we're still, still coming. I actually lose my suction grip at the ear. I can just see that where that fell down. I actually lost my suction grip. I was so far out of the ear. Because the weight of that skin then pulls <laughs> down, doesn't it? And down. pulls it off the suction. But look at that. Still, I can't believe that is still going. Look at that go. 
It's one of my records. This, well, this is a so, good one. Look at the still size going. <laughs> of that. And we've just managed to pull it out. So <laughs> you'd wow. be quite surprised at this one now, guys. So let's have a little look. So there's a little bit of wax behind that. So obviously, like we were talking about this earlier, but about yeah. whether we show patients what comes out of the rear canals. Now, some patients are really enthusiastic and they really want to see it. Other patients will say from the get-go, don't show me anything. I don't want to see what comes out of my ear. Did that patient take a look at that skin? Oh, I, I was dangling it in front of their face. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was so proud of that one. I was like, look Swinging at this. Around, look what came out of your head. Because <laughs> they are genuinely quite shocked, don't they, as the yeah. walk comes out. They're like, whoa, yeah. that's a massive piece when they come out. But it's, um, they always say it's, you, you can fit quite a bit in an ear canal yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And the, the surprising part with this one is it didn't actually look like there was much in there to start with. Yeah. It just looked like a really small little, it almost looked quite wet to start with. Now we're just kind of cleaning up here, just kind of cleaning up these last little bits. Now this section of dry skin is the part that's kind of still attached, so you can see this is putting up a bit of a bit of resistance. Yeah, guys, if you are enjoying this video, give us a thumbs up, give us a like on there. If you uh, need need to, no, I would like you to subscribe. We would love you to subscribe. Uh, but if you are in, really enjoying it, click the subscribe button for me. Uh, if you click the bell, you get a notification every single time we send out a new video, uh, and then you'll see the lovely Taylor Green and myself more often. Then <laughs> it's just this. getting these last little bits. You can actually see the patient flinch slightly there. Um, oh, and again, <laughs> um, now that we've cleared that blockage, this patient is hearing this suction to its full potential. Yeah. Um, so every time we're suctioning in these little bits, the patient's actually sort of just slightly yeah. flinching a little bit, which is normal, which is absolutely normal with the uh, with this game. Take a look at this though. Wow, <laughs> look at that. So we've got a seven centimeter long skin ribbon that we've just removed. It's the removed width of it as well. Look how wide that is. <laughs> that is that is that is like half of the canal wall coming away there. I think looking at that. And that to that to date is my my longest. That is skin that is a, that is a beastie. A that is. That uh, I forgot. To, I think that's just under three inches, or about two and three quarter inches. I think that is actually. I can't actually see the bottom of the screen, but that's about two and three quarter inches there, guys. Well, thank you. Oh, um, stay tuned. Tomorrow's Christmas Day. You do get a video on Christmas Day. Um, tomorrow there's a really big wax plug, a huge wax plug on tomorrow's one. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. Um, and thank you very much for watching today, guys. We will see you for Christmas Day. Have a lovely Christmas Eve, everyone. Go and enjoy yeah. yourself eggnog everything you guys do on christmas eve go and have a really lovely time and we shall see you on christmas day christmas day drink responsibly yes oh most definitely yes yes um, <laughs> have a lovely christmas guys and as always guys take care of yourselves take care of your ears and take care of one another and we'll see you on christmas bye everyone bye well hello you lovely lot and welcome to my party 800 mrs b here hasn't it been a while my goodness now, first of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to each and every one of you that have joined us on that journey towards 800. Whether you're somebody that was there at day one and is still there now, a big thank you. Or even if today is the first time that you've ever watched us, thank you very much for joining us. And we pre appreciate every single like, comment and follow. So thanks to you all. Now, my favourite episode has to be um, episode 499, T12. I think it is on TikTok part 26. Why do I like that? 30.2 million. 30.2 million times that has been watched. Now that to me is amazing. We could never reach that in that amount of people as a business without social media. Um, the reason that it means so much to me is that we are getting people walking through the door every single day that have seen us on our social media, that class Reese and Taylor as somebody that they know and trust, which they should. Um, and they know the fantastic work that they carry out. And I'm, I'm sure that the same goes country, possibly worldwide, as a result of everybody's commitment to social media. All the audio, all, all of the audiology teams are doing a wonderful job. They're breaking down barriers as far as hearing and hearing loss is concerned and gaining help with your ears. Um, so important. Secondly, I get emails and um, texts and comments every single day of people who are saying they're changing their career or they're starting a new career in audiology as a result of watching what the boys do on screen. Fantastic. Um, thrilled about that. Wales is crying out for new audiologists, so absolutely thrilled that you are thinking or in the middle of that journey. So well done to you all. Um, and third, I know you lovely waxaholics get your kicks. Love that. Um, a massive thank you also to um, our team for joining us on this today. I know it's not been easy for many of you. Um, loads of your camera shine. You've done an awesome job. You're absolutely wonderful. And 
the biggest thank you has to go to our boys, to your boys, to Taylor and Reese for the wonderful work that you do on this channel all the time. Um, Reese in particular spends hours editing um, so that you get to see the videos and the quality of them that you do today. Um, and to our lovely Taylor Green, who's had a journey. You now see him as the relaxed and lovely individual that he is on camera. So well done to you, my lovely, for the journey that you've been on. Um, I appreciate all the staff so very much. And to all of you viewers, thank you for being part of this beautiful journey with us. Take it all, Mrs. B. Hey everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thanks very much for watching that Ewax Wibble compilation video today. Uh, so you can see this first patient here, very, very dark wax and quite blocked up in both sides as well. Patients be experiencing a little bit of tinnitus, a little bit of ringing in the ears with these, uh, with this wax as well uh, and some reduced hearing. Now what you can see is that wax itself, uh, it's this very, very sort of deep brown, almost black color in places. So this is very old wax. Uh, so it's been in there a little while. You can see it's also very sticky here at the entrance. Now, when we've got sort of quite hardened up wax, sometimes when you pop some olive oil in, which is what we recommend our patients to do before they come and see us, it can soften the surface wax or it can uh, become a little bit stickier then. So what you can see we've got here is the standard size on the tube, very slowly working our way around this plug of wax. Now I've got a good grip here. We're just trying to draw this next section out. Now what you'll see is it's starting to draw, but now we're starting to get to this slightly more crumbly wax at the back. So this is the drier wax that's sitting behind that front section there. And you can see this is coming away in tiny, tiny little pieces, but it is coming away here. So we're having to reposition and try and just gently maneuver this out of the canal. Now, this particular patient was a little bit nervous having their, their wax removed. And a lot of patients are when they come through. Uh, a lot of patients have been used to what they call irrigation or syringe in the GP surgeries, but not many people may have had microsuction unless you've had it done at the hospital. So it is a bit of an unknown factor for a lot of these patients. You have to be really cautious and explain everything as you're going along and uh, explain the different tools. So what you can see here, we've got the, the Jobson horn in now, just a little bit easier to remove. And sometimes I will switch to using the Jobson horn. If we get uh, somebody who is particularly nervous, then the microsuction can be quite noisy. Uh, and if somebody's a little bit nervous or jumpy, it can make them feel a little bit more nervous. So by using the Jobson horn, it's obviously very quiet because you're gonna hear the wax moving around in the ear canals you take this away. Uh, so we will do that sometimes and switch tools up a little bit to make it more comfortable for the patient. But you can see we've got this big old chunks of wax coming away now. It's really loosening. There you go. You can see the piece that we just took out I was struggling to pick that up with the Jobson horn just a second ago. And what I can see now is we've got this very thin, soft layer here, just at the base of the canal. Uh, we're just taking that away. And there's the eardrum there looking nice and healthy. So patient feeling much better. So this is the patient, uh, patient's other ear here. And uh, you can see we've got a very similar story on this side. There is a little bit of a lift of dry skin as well, just underneath. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just sort of wrapping around the base of this wax plug as well. Stay tuned for the second patient as well, guys. If you do like good wax plugs and they came away really cleanly, make sure you stay tuned for the second patient as well. And I will have a quick chat to you about episode 500 at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. So uh, we're just getting that little bit of skin's gone now. We're just working on the plug that was sitting behind it. Sometimes when you get these kind of lifts of skin and you've got the plug here and the skin's just kind of gone over the bottom, it can just hold it in place. So sometimes we have to remove that piece of skin before we can get to that next plug, which is what we've done here. So just slowly drawing this out. There we go. And you can see just that you can see the actual top of the ear canal now. So we've managed to get the majority of this plug out here. It's just this last piece that we just need to wiggle around. I've slowed this down a little bit. You can see these little bits coming away here. And then we'll go in and get this last section. Now this looks like it's gonna lift quite cleanly. When it's this darker color, a lot of the time you'll get, as long as it doesn't crumble apart too much, you'll get quite big plugs. This one just crumbled a little bit as I lifted. I could see that back end of the wax there just break away from that front section. It's quite a narrow little ear canal as well. So not the easiest one to work in. And those cilia around the outside edge are quite prominent. So 
you can see they're actually quite long and they've got a really important job. They stop any bigger bits of dirt and debris from getting inside the ear canal. Uh, but sometimes they can just obscure your view, especially if you're working closer to the outside part of the ear canal uh, because the endoscope has to sit behind the tool you're using. So it can sometimes sit just behind those cilia. But there we are, you can see that ear canal and eardrum looking absolutely perfect there. So we'll show you what I moved. Look at the color, you can see how dark this is. So we've got four centimeters, an inch and a half. I'll do that quickly before the rulers move. Um, and you can see it's very, very dark in color so of quite old wax. Difficult to put a time scale on it though. A lot of people ask when you, when you talk about old, how old are you talking about? You can get wax that, you know, even a year old sometimes that will look like this. So it's, it's always a difficult one to put to, to pinpoint down. So we're gonna cut to a second patient now, right. <laughs> Now this patient came through, it's a short and sweet one, but it's a good one. So what you'll see here is this patient, you can see it's completely blocked. There's no gap around that wax at all. It's quite deep seated. Uh, I, I would put a good bet this patient's used cotton buds at some point uh, in there. But what's happened here now is when you try and get a grip, it's this solid block, this compacted wax, uh, which is never easy to remove, especially when you've got this really flat surface. You'd think that would be better for you to get the suction grip, but when it's stuck all around the outside edge, the grip isn't strong enough to pull this out. So I'm lifting from the base of the canal here so I'm just lifting up from the bottom there we are uh, because sometimes you, if you lift that you'll get a little bit of dry skin or slightly harder wax underneath that you can get a good grip on and slide and twist the wax out uh, it's not quite twisting and I can see if I put pressure on the top here it's just going to push it further in so let's bring the crocodile forceps into play here we'll get a good grip on this bottom section we'll start to pull this forward if we're in luck then the whole thing will move and we were lucky today. You can see we've managed to pull this plug down. Look at that skin material underneath there that's come away and a little sort of tail of skin that's come away as well. So that plug came away really cleanly. It's always nice when they come away like that. There's a little bit of tidying up to do around the outside part of the ear and a little bit of hoovering up here. There we are. And there's the eardrum. And you can see we're a bit of an absence of light reflex. We've got a tiny bit there, uh, but you can see this is more uh, Q-tip use. You can see that dent right in the middle of it. Now this wax, whereas the other one was a hard solid block, this is a little bit softer. So it's still pretty solid, but it's just got a little bit of movement to it. So I'm trying to detach it from the canal wall. You never know how this kind of plug is gonna go because it's, it's sometimes they can be so stuck to the canal wall. We did one today that was so stuck everywhere that it was a real kind of monster to try and remove. Um, but sometimes if we're really lucky, we'll be able to get a little bit of a grip in this and use the solid center of the wax against it, which you'll see us do now in a second. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just try to loosen up the sides I'm also looking for any uh, softer sections there we can get a grip on, but nothing's really budging. So let's pop the Jobson horn over the top. Now it's not big enough a gap there to get through with the Jobson horn. So let's create a gap. Let's push down, push into the center harder section. There we are of the wax and we use the whole thing against itself. And you'll see it all start to come away now. There we are, a little bit came off the top, but you'll see the whole thing will start to kind of slide forwards now. There we go. And there's a little bit of dry skin under that one as well. Uh, I think this one actually, I, th I think I dropped this one uh, on the patient. Yeah, I did, there you go. <laughs> I tried to go to the ear and it fell to the patient's front row to pick it up. Uh, but there's a little bit of uh, dry skin you can see that's been holding this in. So let's use the, the fine end, the smaller of the suction tubes because we don't want to risk any clarinetting in here. So we're just gonna uh, pop the, the very, very thin fine end on, just tidy this little bit of skin up. There we go. And um, we'll take a look behind that. There's the eardrum looking good there. Slight absence of the light reflex on that one. We were a little bit dull. So these are the two plugs we removed. So uh, we've got two, two centimeters, I would say there. I think if we squidge the skin up a little bit, that's probably about an inch thereabouts. Um, so you can see it, that long tail of skin that came away from the back end there as well. Right. Episode 500 is coming out on, it's actually a bank holiday here in the UK. So you lucky people are gonna get it on a bank holiday Monday. Um, episode, what can I tell you about episode 500? Uh, what is Mrs. B allowing me to say? Okay, you're only gonna be, what, what you're gonna see is something that we've we've never done on the channel before. So it's, it's a bit of a different one. And it's so hard for me not to tell you what's going on, but that's all I'm gonna say. It's a good one though, and there's, no, I can't say anything else. Okay, stay tuned on Monday, uh, 9 p.m. That episode 500 is going to come out. Uh, we'll probably do it as a premiere. So I'll be there on the chat uh, along with Mrs. B uh, to answer any of your questions on the chat as well. So we'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend, guys. Look after yourselves, look after one another, and look after your ears. And uh, yeah, see you for episode 500. Bye, everyone. <laughs>